good morning. Welcome in and praise the Lord for another, another privilege and another opportunity to be able to share the word with you today. I want to welcome you into Tuesday morning's devotion. I'm so glad you're with me. We do this every Tuesday and every Friday morning. And if this is the first time that you've ever been with us, just want to welcome you in. I'm so glad you've chosen to do that. I believe you'll be glad you did, and I hope you become a regular uh, watcher, you know, of these broadcasts that we put out. Just 10 or 11 minutes long, just to encourage us in the Word. Uh, we started this during the pandemic, you know, when we weren't having church. We were doing this uh, every weekday morning, but uh, when we did come back to church, we still wanted to keep it going to some degree, so we do it a couple of times a week. Tuesdays and Fridays, and we always share the Word. I'm not, I'm not here to give my opinions or... Uh, talk about anything in the news or anything like that. All that interests me in our time together is to share the Word of God. So again, thank you so much for joining me, and I'm so glad you're here. I want to share something with you this morning uh, about how that you and I can plead our case. That is, when we are up against a situation, we have found what God's Word has to say about our particular situation. And we, we, we are going to plead our case because we have a promise. We have a covenant from God. So if we have a promise in God's word and something is coming into our lives that is violating that covenant, then see, we have every right to stand against it. And our legal precedent is God's word. See, so that's what we are to do when we are pleading our case. It's just like a lawyer uh, in a court situation you know, he pleads the case of his client and he is using, uh, you know, legal precedent and things like that. He's using that to found his case. So, you know, the believer can do the very same thing. And of course, we're building that on God's word. Let me share with you a portion of scripture here and we'll show you where we're coming from to establish this uh, little message this morning, this devotion. Uh, something to be of great benefit and advantage to us, which God's word is always meant to be just that for us. Here in Isaiah chapter 43, if you have your Bible with you and you'd like to look at this, if you're in a place where you can't, then just feel free to pay close attention and I'll read it and we'll talk about it just for a moment. I primarily wanted to verse, look at verse 26, but I want to read verse 25 since we're there. It's such a wonderful truth. It's this the Spirit of the Lord saying, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake. And then he says, and I will not remember thy sins. What a precious promise that is. That is such wonderful information. It's such a joy to read that passage of Scripture, knowing that this is coming from the heart of God, so we know it's truth, we know it's validity, and here he's just saying, I have blotted out your transgressions. And of course, he did this through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, through the sacrificial work of the Lord Jesus on the cross that was done for you and I. He was able to blot out, I mean, just like getting a clean slate. You know, uh, I remember back in school, you know, the, the chalkboard ran all the way across the front of the uh, the class there you know on that wall and it would get all you know used up the teacher would be marking on it sometimes students would be and every once in a while uh, she'd take the eraser and she'd just erase the whole thing you know it's just like getting a clean slate you know well that's exactly what happened to us all of our sins all of our iniquities everything that separated us from a perfect relationship with our father God was blotted out and not only that but friends he says I will remember your sins no more. In other words, he chooses not to remember your sins. And you know, the reason I say it that way, you know, uh, the Bible, we, we know that God is omniscient, simply meaning that he knows everything. Well, if he knows everything, he knows everything that's ever happened. He knows what's taking place now. And he knows everything that's ever going to happen. So see, he knows about our past. But what's so beautiful and so wonderful, and you see such the grace of God here is that he chose not to remember our sins. He chose not to remember them. So when he looks at us, 
He only sees us through the blood of the Lord Jesus. And because of the new birth, we are in Christ. So see, when he looks at us, he sees us the same way that he does when he looks at Jesus. He sees Jesus in us. And that's why he can say to us, just like he did Jesus, that is my son, that is my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. But let's get to our text right here, the very next verse, verse 26. That was just too good to pass up. He says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Notice he said, let us. In other words, you're not in this all by yourself. He's saying, let us. God's saying, I'm with you here. I'm backing you. I'm supporting you. I am alongside you. Let's plead your case together. He says, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So see, the aim here is justification. God wants you to be justified. He wants the promises of his word to manifest in your life. He wants them to come forth and overcome anything that's trying to get in the way of you being more than a conqueror. He wants you justified. He wants you to win. He wants you to be on the winning side of this situation that you may be dealing with right at this moment. But you notice he begins by saying, put me in remembrance. You know, what is God saying when he says that? I will never forget. It was either the first time I ever read that or it was the first time that I was ever really conscious of, of that scripture and took note of what it was saying. When I said, when I th saw there where the Spirit of the Lord was saying, put me in remembrance, my first thought was, you know, can God forget? I mean, God, is, he knows everything. God can't forget anything. But see, God wasn't asking us to put him in remembrance because he had forgotten anything. See, He's telling you and I to put him in remembrance because if we're reminding him, see, of his, of his covenant with us, then we're putting ourselves in remembrance, see. If we're reminding him of his promises that he's made towards us, then we're putting ourselves also in remembrance. We, we may forget them. He doesn't forget them. But we might forget them if we don't keep them, if we don't stay in the word and keep those promises before us at all times. So he says, put me in remembrance. And then he says, let us plead together. Well, that's, that's just so beautiful. But actually, he's telling us, plead together whatever promise it is that you see in my word that pertains to you. But specifically speaking, he's even talking here about pleading our case in prayer or about prayer, pleading his promises in regards to our prayer life. Now, when you pray, we are to stand before the throne of God and we are to remind him of his promises. Now what we're doing when we do that, we are laying our case out before him. Just like a lawyer lays his case out before the judge and the jury. He's laying his case out. And he uses legal precedent and he is continually bringing up the law to, to establish and support what he believes to be true so that he can um, get his client, you know, acquitted of this situation here. So see, just like a lawyer is doing that, what we do, our legal precedent, see, we bring up what God's word says about us. We bring up the promises of God towards us. We also are bringing up his covenant promises. And see, friends, because we are born again, we are of the seed of Abraham and heirs according to that promise. So see, we have a covenant with God. We may not be of the Jewish nation, but we are spiritual Israel because of Jesus. See, Jesus came and took upon himself what separated us from God, gave us his right standing. Now we are the righteousness of God in Christ, and we are covenant people just like Abraham was. Now, one translation says, where he says, declare thou, one translation says, set forth thy cause. And God is asking you here to bring his word, to put him in remembrance, and to plead your covenant rights. See, this is a challenge from God to lay your case before him. And friends, God's just simply asking you, lay your case before me, 
We'll plead this case together and you will be justified. You will come out on the winning side. So friends, even if you have, for an example, if you have unsaved children, friends, go to the Word of God. Find out what God's Word says about His will for your children to be born again. And then you read, you take that, that promise. You take that promise as a covenant and you plead your case before God and you believe for their salvation and you call it forth. When you come before God, according to His Word, friends, His Word has never failed anyone yet and it's not going to fail you. When you plead your case based on God's promises for you, God is right there pleading your case with you. You're guaranteed to be justified in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you so much for being with me today. Have a great rest of this Tuesday. Be blessed in all you do. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night in our midweek Wednesday night service. God bless each and every one of you.